It was a golden sea of sand where wind and dust once swallowed every trace of life. In northern China, the Taklamakan Desert stretches for more than 337,000 square kilometers, a vast expanse hostile to survival. But today, across this endless landscape, an impossible sight is taking shape. Green forests slowly taking root and spreading toward the horizon. Lands that were once barren, where devastating sandstorms wiped out entire villages, are now stirring with new life. This monumental mission is known as the Green Great Wall, an ecological endeavor of almost unimaginable scale and one of the largest restoration efforts on Earth. As the project unfolds, hundreds of millions of trees have been planted across the shifting sands. Through this colossal undertaking, millions of hectares of land, once lost to desertification, have been painstakingly reclaimed from the advancing dunes. It arrives on the wind, a silent tide of dust that swallows cities whole. For centuries, northern China has contended with this unseen adversary, sand. With each seasonal shift, monsoon winds descend from the Gobi and Taklamakan deserts, unleashing colossal dust storms that smother the skies above Beijing, plunging day into an eerie twilight. By the 1990s, the problem had become inescapable. In some years, the capital's inhabitants were forced to wear masks for over 80 days, a simple act of survival against the fine, choking dust carried on the wind. The origins of this threat lie deep in the geological past. Millions of years ago, the Taklamakan Desert was forged when the colossal Tian Shan and Kunlun mountain ranges rose, creating a formidable barrier that sealed off the basin from the life-giving moisture of the Indian Ocean and Siberia. The land trap between them was condemned to become a vast, arid wasteland. Here, the average annual rainfall dwindles to less than 100 millimeters, nearly 10 times lower than that of California, a place itself renowned for its dry climate. To visualize this scarcity, imagine each square meter of Earth receiving the equivalent of a single 500 milliliter bottle of water each week. It is a thirst so profound that almost no plant life can endure it. The climate is one of brutal extremes. Summer temperatures routinely soar above 40 degrees Celsius, while winter plunges the landscape to below 20 degrees Celsius. And through it all, merciless sandstorms can erupt without warning at any time. This punishing natural cycle was then accelerated by human activity. Widespread deforestation, relentless overgrazing, and the overextraction of groundwater exhausted the fragile soil and stripped away its protective vegetation, paving the way for an uncontrolled wave of desertification to sweep across Northern China. It begins not with steel, but with simple straw, a fragile defense against an unrelenting ocean of sand. This monumental effort started not with heavy machinery, but with a measured plan. Across the Taklamakan Desert, engineers used satellite mapping and drones to analyze the movement of dunes in the direction of the wind. This data then became the blueprint for a colossal grid system. The design materialized as a sprawling checkerboard laid across the burning sands, each square measuring roughly 20 by 20 feet. From above, the land resembles a gigantic quilt of golden squares stretching to the horizon. Yet this image conceals a massive engineering operation conducted under brutal conditions. Millions of pounds of straw were transported hundreds of miles into the desert's heart, where vehicles often sank into soft sand and paved roads simply did not exist. Once there, teams of workers began digging shallow trenches and placing bundles of straw into precise grid lines. Under a relentless sun, with temperatures rising above 49 degrees Celsius and no shade in sight, every movement was a battle. Still, thousands of Chinese workers persisted, for each grid of straw was more than a barrier. It was the foundation for life to return. The woven pattern stabilizes the shifting dunes, slows the wind, and creates microzones where moisture can linger long enough for planting. With the grid in place, mechanical augers and planting machines moved in, drilling small holes at the center of each square. Here they transplanted seedlings of drought-resistant species like saxol, desert poplar, and red willow, all nurtured in nurseries beforehand. Each young plant was positioned with precision, its fragile roots settled just below the surface, shielded by the straw from the scorching sun and shifting sand. 
Workers added a measured amount of water and compacted the soil to ensure the roots made contact with the moist layer beneath. As weeks went by, the protective grid continued its work, keeping the surface cooler and reducing evaporation. Over time, the straw gradually decomposed through wind, dew, and microorganisms, becoming an organic blanket rich in nutrients. This natural fertilizer fed the developing root systems, helping them extend deeper into the stable soil, transforming fragile seedlings into a living network that anchors the dunes. In a land scorched by relentless light, a new kind of forest is taking root. Beyond the simple planting of trees, a second method has emerged, one that transforms the desert's greatest challenge into its most powerful asset. In the heart of the Takla Makan, where sunlight relentlessly beats down, engineers have harnessed this energy, forging a bold new solution to let the sun itself grow the forest. With more than 2,700 hours of sunlight annually, this region is bathed in some of the world's most intense solar radiation. Rather than allowing this blazing energy to simply scorch the sand, it has been transformed into a vast source of renewable power. Stretching for over 436 kilometers across the barren expanse, the Tarim Desert Highway is now lined with 86 solar-powered pumping stations. At each station, hundreds of photovoltaic panels silently convert sunlight into electricity, which is then used to draw precious groundwater from depths of more than 100 meters below the surface. This water travels through a hidden network of underground pipelines, delivered directly to the roots of over 200,000 trees through drip irrigation. The highway has been transformed into the world's first carbon-free desert expressway. Here, a simple, elegant cycle unfolds. Sunlight creates electricity, electricity pumps water, and water sustains life. To maximize the use of space, the solar fields are elevated approximately two meters off the ground, a simple adjustment that allows air to circulate and creates a unique microclimate below. Beneath the panels, the shaded soil stays cooler and holds more moisture. This sheltered environment now supports hardy species like licorice, red willow, and hawthorn, forming natural green corridors under an artificial sky of silicon and steel. The landscape once known as the Sea of Death is now one of the planet's largest ecological laboratories, where sunlight, technology, and human perseverance converge. From what was once seen as a hostile force, humanity has learned to turn sunlight into water and sand into forest. And here in this land once called the Sea of Death, the sun itself has become the ultimate source of life. Here the sun's gaze is captured and returned a thousandfold. Thousands of heliostat mirrors, organized in vast sweeping arcs, stand across the landscape, each one pivoting on two axes to meticulously track the sun's journey across the heavens. Their combined reflections converge into a single, blinding beam focused upon the pinnacle of a central tower. Inside this receiver, the concentrated energy heats molten salt to a staggering temperature of over 540 degrees Celsius. This immense thermal power is then harnessed to generate high-pressure steam, which in turn drives the massive turbines and generators that produce electricity. Any surplus heat is ingeniously stored within insulated tanks of molten salt. This thermal battery allows the facility to continue generating power steadily through the night or during periods of heavy cloud cover. Building and operating this 50 megawatt solar power tower in the Taklamakan Desert is an endeavor estimated to cost around $130 million. It stands as another piece in a grander strategy, joining efforts to plant forests and stabilize the sands. Harnessing the sun's power is a key part of this monumental effort to transform the very edge of the world. Where once there was only sand, a new kind of oasis is emerging. It is an invitation not just for trees, but for people. China is transforming the fringes of its great deserts into destinations for ecotourism. Along the frontiers of the Taklamakan and Gobi, man-made forests, vast solar arrays, and new reservoirs have been developed into parks that merge scientific endeavor with public exploration. In certain regions, community-based tourism is taking root, blending eco-lodging with the rich cultural traditions of the Uyghur and Mongolian peoples. For a more direct encounter, travelers can join camel tours across the desert, lasting from two to five hours depending on the route. These journeys wind through immense, sweeping dunes, pausing at rest stops set up within the sands, 
with each trip costing between 40 and 120 US dollars. Through this fusion of conservation, education, and real world experience, the Taklamakan stands not just as a monument to ecological technology, but as living proof that humans can exist in harmony with nature. A single black artery pulses through a sea of gold. It stands as a testament not to conquest, but to coexistence with one of nature's most unforgiving environments. To open this vast and isolated region for tourism and development, China embarked on one of its most ambitious infrastructure projects. This was the Tarim Desert Highway, forged to connect the distant oasis cities of Luntai and Minfeng by slicing directly through the desert's heart for over 300 kilometers. Construction began in 1993, launching a grueling two-year battle against the elements. Crews endured shifting dunes, blinding sandstorms, and oppressive temperatures that climbed above 50 degrees Celsius before the highway officially opened on October 4, 1995. The immense undertaking came at a cost of around 1.75 billion yuan, or roughly 260 million US dollars. Yet its true resilience is hidden from view. An intricate foundation of gravel, straw mats, and geotextiles lies buried beneath the pavement, engineered to stop the ever encroaching sands from swallowing the road. Today, this vital corridor not only supports remote solar farms and research stations, but also acts as a gateway, guiding travelers through one of the planet's most formidable and once unreachable landscapes. A landscape once defined by its silence now rustles with the sound of leaves. What was once among the planet's most forbidding landscapes has been utterly transformed, the result of decades of tireless work that surpassed even the most optimistic predictions. An immense ring of green now encircles nearly the whole of the Taklamakan Desert. Official records confirm the scale of this achievement, with over 30 million hectares of desolate ground brought back to life. This effort has dramatically expanded the nation's forest coverage, from just 10% in 1949 to more than 25% today. In places such as Aksu and Kaikea, where endless dunes once defined the view, immense forests of poplar, hawthorn, almond, and walnut trees now stretch in unbroken lines toward the horizon. Scientific estimates reveal a staggering drop in sandstorm frequency, a decline of 82% since the 1980s. In Kaikea, the number of dusty days has plummeted from roughly 100 each year to a mere 30. These revived lands now pull more than 20,000 tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere annually, earning the name of the desert's green lungs. The place once feared as the sea of death has, against all odds, finally learned to breathe. Life takes hold, even when its roots are not born of the soil beneath. This journey reveals the full arc of a desert's conversion, a shift from desolate sand to a panorama of vibrant green. Barren dunes recede, replaced by living landscapes powered by little more than sunlight and science. The result is a spectacle that blurs the line between a miracle of the natural world and an undeniable triumph of human engineering.